I know we was up here picking a while ago, a little earlier, and we've gone down there and tried our best to practice a few tunes so we can uh, get ready to do it. Now, we got a young lady that's coming up here and play some music for us, and you see a bunch of fellas here, except this fella, he's, he's, he knows what he's doing here, and the rest of us will just be uh, trying to hang on. Now, I know I can remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be all right. This uh, young lady I've been watching, I saw her on TV years ago. Now, this is before the, the main big deal she was doing. I used to watch uh, p part of her family. Her, she's, They've got like he's 23 of them, I think, something like that. And you know, one of the biggest families and one of the most talented families that's ever been in this area. Originally from uh, like in the Galax area, and they've been all over. And then I'm sure you remember later, later on, here come a... TV show that one of the most popular ones that's ever been on TV called Hee Haw. Y'all have seen that, I'm sure, and still see reruns of it on once in a while. And I just want you to put your hands together and uh, welcome one of the best entertainers I think that I've ever seen in my life. And, and it's an honor for us to try to get to pick with her son. So right back here she is with this banjo, so make welcome Ronnie Stoneman. Thank you, thank you. I deserved every bit of that. <laughs> his hormone pill. <laughs> so did I. And they're getting expensive. So if any of you ladies got any, just put them in a hat and throw them up there. <laughs> I'm terrible. I have had so much fun today meeting people and seeing old friends. They, there was a feller, you know, it's so funny. I grew up in a family, like I said, of 23 children. And mom and dad were musicians and played music over here. Mom was from Galax, and Daddy was from Iron Ridge. And uh, he married her when she was 19 years old, which is very nice, you know, because I got married at 16. <laughs> Me and Loretta Lynn's writing a book called Close Encounters with the Third Grade. <laughs> he said, that's pretty good. I'm going to, look at that. 
I'm going to uh, talk to y'all a wee bit. You know, being from a big family, I'm not going to say, we were so poor. Because every time in Nashville, whenever you hear somebody being interviewed, you know, like, like CMT or CMTD or those videos, how did you get started in the music business? And the young people, I was so poor when I was little. You know, they always do that and it kind of, I look at them like, duh. But I will tell you one thing. I'm going to give you a wee bit of a hint. My little brother swallowed a dime, and I followed him around three days with a stick. That's a hint. Come on. That's when you know what it is, what the situation is. And nowadays, it, you know, it's Johnny, get in the corner, time out. Time out, Johnny. I remember when it was, Lord, I won't do it no more, but I swear I won't do it no more. The switch will kill you, I'll tell you. Here's a song I hope you all like because Tom T. Hall recorded this song. And I like to sing his songs because they never go high or too low, you know. It's not, you know, I can't do that. So here's a song called Clayton Delaney. And I like to do, I do this because my brother Scotty Stoneman was one of the finest fiddle players that ever was in this world. But unfortunately, he had a bad drinking problem because everybody will send a fiddler up a drink or two or the band. You ever had that? You never did. Well, funny dog. <laughs> Look, he ain't old enough to know what likes you. I remember my daddy, when I first started playing out away from the family, he said, now, Ronnie, don't start drinking. He said, because everybody will send the band up a drink, but they won't buy them a sandwich when they're down. And that's the truth. So I always went by that. But and I got a lot of whoopings too because me and Scott, we, had, we were the wild ones. But here's a song called Clayton Delaney. Gee. I remember the year Clayton Delaney died. Nobody ever knew it but I ran off in the woods and I cried. Clayton used to tell me, gal, just put that old banjo away. Cause there ain't no money in it, it'll lead you to an early grave. Oh, I guess if I'll admit it, now Clayton taught me how to drink booze. I can see him half stone picking out the love sick blues. Oh, for fun to wind up Clayton. Oh, he seems so good to me. But he never took his guitar and laid it down in Tennessee. Let's go then, darling. guitar picker in our town. Thought he was a hero, I used to follow Clayton around. When Clayton died, I made him a promise, I carry on somehow. Oh, I'd give a hundred dollars if he could just see me now. Yes, I remember the year that Clayton Delaney died. Nobody ever knew it, but I ran off in the woods and I cried. It made a big impression on me, although I was a barefoot kid. Oh, they said he got religion in the end, and I'm glad that he did. Yes, I remember the year that Clayton Delaney died. Nobody ever knew it, but I ran off in the woods and I cried. I know there's a lot of preachers 
who know lots more than I do. But it could be that the good Lord, he likes a little picking too. Yes, I remember the year that Clayton Delaney died. And that's super, you're great. This band is so good. Now, this gentleman here is, his name is Stu Geisbert. And he's from, huh? That's the nicest thing anybody's called me all day, gentlemen. A gentleman, he said, nice. <laughs> and he books me, but he also picks the bass. As you can see, he plays excellent, and he plays it with a lot of bluegrass pickers around Maryland and Washington, D.C. and Baltimore and a few other places. And I ran across him, and I said, I like him picking the bass with me because he's solid ground. And he, if you need any bookings for me or anything, see him because I don't want to know nothing because <laughs> I, I have paid my dues. I remember playing a lot in Washington, D.C. with a bucket on the stage. And that's all we worked for. And we'd get sometimes $56 a week for six shows a night, six nights a week, seven. Well, that's how much we had every night for six nights a week, $56. And we had a bucket. And it was called the pitch pot. And this is the truth. And if you didn't pitch in the pot tonight, tomorrow night, we didn't have a pot to pitch in. <laughs> And that was the truth. They all, hey, honey, sing me a Kitty Wells. And they'd drop in a quarter or a nickel. Or, and Scott would say, if you want a song, you just write it down on, write the request out on a $100 bill. If we don't know it, we'll write it. <laughs> we played, we, we played a lot of places. We played bad, there's chicken wire around the stage. Honest? Like the Blues Brothers, you know, they thought they were brand new with it. But that was our deal, because at one time, bluegrass and country music wasn't totally, you know, recognized as something really grand. Until about the, I guess, the early 60s, I could see the audience starting to change. They wouldn't fall it all over each other. And Daddy played music. There was five bands in our family. And I remember, you know, when uh, we were playing in Vegas, and a man came up and said to my father, because mommy and dad had five sets of twins. And he said, Mr. Stowen, did you get twins every time? And my dad said, no, thousands and thousands of times we got nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> that gives you a... <laughs> now, <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and that little old fellow over there reminds me of one of my youngins, Amy Key. I should, I should be more careful while I say around them little innocent eyes of yours. Look how innocent. He looks like a hound dog that just, you know, woke up. Isn't he cute? Look. But anyway, you know, being from a big family, I'm not, like I said, we weren't poor because we had a mother who prayed. You know, a lot of mothers ain't praying too much, do we? want to have more of that. They're too busy getting drunk and party time. But we had a praying mother at Care to Hickory Stick. And to me, and I mean, she would say, spare the rod, spoil the child. You dance for 30 minutes. That's how I learned to dance. Oh, God, I won't do it no more. I swear I won't do it no more. I swear. <laughs> That's how I learned to dance. And I mean, we learned. But we had, you know, been from a big family, and I'm sure y'all know what an outhouse is. Now, what I tell y'all is the truth because I don't have no writer, excuse me, I don't have a writer, and I don't have anybody saying, hey, this is what you ought to say, and no cue cards held up. But we had this outhouse, and it was the king of all outhouses, because the hole was deep. <laughs> my brothers had to dig the hole, and my, my dad made them, and they were mad about it. So... I remember they dug and dug all day long, and it was like the bottomless pit. And I got married one time, whatever. I, I married, all, all my husbands were housekeepers. They kept the house, but, <laughs> but <laughs> that was true too. That's why I'm wearing these old bibbed overhauls. Want to see my new shoes? No. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, we had this outhouse, and I lived, well, I moved up in Ohio, and I married a banker. Oh, God. I, there's a story there. But anyway, I was taught 
while I was there that there are three classes of people, the upper class, the middle class, and the so-called low class. Well, the upper class I found out later, after I left there, that it meant that they had, the upper class had a two-seater outhouse. <laughs> the middle class had a one-seater. But well, we had a two before, and that's God's <laughs> truth. This is true, and you had to get up on it like a chicken. <laughs> and, and hold on. That's where I learned to pray. Oh, God, don't let me fall. You know, I did. That's the truth. And it was awful. And I hated that old outhouse. And it was a, it was, it leaned sideways. And Daddy took a cable and tied it to a tree to keep it from falling over the hill. We had class now, I'm telling you. And that was a mud dauber's nest, that big around, stuck in the corner. And every time I would go in there, my brothers would, you know, throw rocks or something. They were awful. I had some of the worst mountain brothers boys you ever seen in your life and they'd aggravate you to death and mama said now honey I was eight years old and mama said now honey don't let the boys see you go in the outhouse it's not ladylike remember the time when it wasn't ladylike to be seen going to the bathroom I you know mom used to get after you for that but I went in there and I got up on that too before and that old tin roof had spider webs and god it was awful and I was up on that outhouse see praying, God, don't let me fall. And my brother took a brick, I think it was Scotty, threw a brick up on top of that old tin roof, and it knocked that mud dauber's nest loose. And foul, it hit right the floor, and I'm bumping. <laughs> and I, I swear, this is a gospel truth. And there was thousands going, you, you, you. And about the third whoop, I went backwards. <laughs> And God loves me. Of course, he loves us all, but he flipped me and I landed feet first. <laughs> right up to here. That's why I got a long neck. Because it'll grow if you're in that condition. Help, help. And it was echoing. It was going, help. Look yonder. There's mud daubers right there. I was afraid to holler, help, you know. <laughs> Don't jar that. Down. Don't jar them down. That's right. You ought to see them dudes. <laughs> and my mother, my brother came in and looked down. He he's thirteen months older than me, and he looked down into the hole. Thank God, I saw his face. <laughs> well, can you imagine looking up and something else coming at you? No place. Oh, come on. Okay, here's a song I hope y'all like. Now, you, would you explain it to that fella over there, sir? You right there. Okay, here, hit me a D, darling. A D. Dog. Right in that mic, like an old country hill. Yes! As I sit here. Just like Kitty Wells. We did a lot of shows with her. And they'd say, ladies and gentlemen, the queen of country music, Miss Kitty Wells. And we'd be doing these state fairs. Thousands of people look like waves. And she'd come up and say, Thank you. Thank you. Roar, roar, roar. Thank you. Roar, roar, roar. Thank you. That's all she did. And I went, whoa. I loved her with all my heart. She, her songs fed my children. And this is one of the songs I used to get a lot of tips in the old bucket for. Hit me one more time. As I said. <laughs> Does it sound like her? Here tonight, the jukebox playing. The tune about the wild side of life. As I listen to the words you are saying. Look at legs diving. It brings memories when I was. A trusting wife. Come on, gang. It wasn't God who talked it talk angels. As you rose in the words of your song, too many times a married men think they're still single. That I. Good 